This is Alicia Alt reporting from the National Press Club in Washington, D.C. The Supreme Court will hear oral arguments on the constitutionality of the Affordable Care Act in late March. Two state attorney generals, Ken Cuccinelli from Virginia and Martha Coakley from Massachusetts, were asked to weigh in on the case at a recent forum at the Press Club. Mr. Cuccinelli led one of the first state suits challenging the health reform law. The Supreme Court will not hear his case. Ms. Coakley helps oversee the Massachusetts Health Plan. Widely viewed as the model for the Affordable Care Act, the plan has become a political football of sorts in the presidential election, being seen as either a failure or a great success. At the forum, Mr. Cuccinelli gave his view that by requiring individuals to buy insurance, the act would be forcing people into commerce in violation of the Constitution. The Supreme Court accepts that as what defines the market for purposes of this case, then I think that you are probably right and that the federal government will be granted this power that it has never before had or exercised to compel people to buy this product. I don't know why you couldn't have just stood up here and made the same argument for food. Um, and then where does, it, where does it end? Clothes, homes, transportation, uh, the list can go on. And then we can argue about what is health care? What all does it encompass? Insurance? Um, I heard my distinguished colleague here distinguish the two. I think that's a legitimate distinction. Um, and uh, those are questions the Supreme Court is going to wrestle with intertwined with the legal question and the, and the historical reality that this power has never before been exercised and it goes way beyond Wickard v. Filburn. All assertions to the contrary aside, I urge you to read the case. Filburn had to do something to subject himself to regulation. We are now regulating under this bill people who are doing nothing. That has never happened before in American history. Ms. Coakley said that Congress is acting within its purview. So it is constitutional, I believe. I believe the court will find that it is constitutional. And rather than get involved in some of what is the philosophy around uh, whether this is an invasion of liberty, and I appreciate my colleagues um, uh, walk back into history. Uh, we know where this history has come from. Uh, and I think you can look at, at Massachusetts. You know, John Adams played a role in the Constitution, too, what our Constitution is based on. No one ever questioned that we could do that under our Constitution. I know the clause is different I appreciate that but clearly when you look at the authority that's laid out in the Commerce Clause the goals that Commerce Clause allows for and the breadth of the court decisions around it I don't think there's any question that the analysis behind Farmer Filburn's uh, regulatory uh, the response on the regulatory end uh, also encompasses this activity uh, and so um, it will be up to uh, the you know judges who have more experience than Ken and I uh, but I I, did, I appreciate this opportunity because I know he's passionate about uh, what he believes in this is what our country allows for the two attorney generals also pontificated on how they thought the court would decide. I think that for many of the justices who may not like the, pub, the, um, the individual mandate, I think they will be hard pressed based upon what is their uh, theory of the Constitution and the ways in which they have decided these kind of cases. I think it will be very difficult for them to explain uh, striking down an individual mandate. But I'm prepared to wait to see what they say. So I don't presume at all that you're going to see anything that's going to run along what you might call party line by way of appoint oars, the pointing presidents, party line votes. I agree with Martha that you're going to see a much closer look at the substance. The fact that they've designated five and a half hours of argument, more than they've done in 50 years, tells me how significant they believe this case is and just how dramatic a ruling is for the Constitution. Thank you.